I think things are so different today mm -hmm. because you want, okay, let's go back to, you, you've talked about this before and I'll just kind of ask you, I think it's good for the audience if you want to go through it. Mm -hmm. 1960, 64% uh, of African-Americans would vote Democrat. Yes, sir. The rest was conservative. Yes, sir. Let's put liberal and conservative. That's a better way of okay. saying it, right? Okay. 64 liberal, 36 conservative. Mm -hmm. 1964, four years later, 92% blacks are voting Democrat. Yeah. Then to be Johnson civil rights legislation. So what 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 happened there? Maybe maybe give a little bit of the history of Goldwater, you know, Lyndon Johnson, what he did. <sighs> JFK's assassinated. Mm -hmm. Then it be Johnson's in office. Republicans and Democrats, back in the day, Dixiecrats, bipartisanly bring a bill to the desk of Lyndon B. Johnson. He signed civil rights legislation in the law. According to whatever reports you believe, Lyndon B. Johnson says, we bring this legislation, we sign this legislation in the law, we'll have the Negroes voting for us for the next 50 years. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, that's what it was. Um, and I think me personally, as I've edified myself over the years to see what's been transpiring in our community, on one hand, when I look at legislation and I think about affirmative action and other things, and I see how I've benefited because opportunities were given to me at a particular moment in time in the 80s, for example, when, you know, that some would say may not have been given to me if I were not an African-American or, or you didn't have affirmative action in a place and what have you. When you hear those things, you're trying to lean left because you're saying they're thinking about us, they're thinking about us. And like you said, those messengers from the Democratic Party are very profound. You've got Jimmy Carter in office, but the economy was so bad, so Reagan had to get him out of there. But you got Reagan in office from 80 to 88. You're looking at what transpired in his administration, good or bad, depending on how you think about it. But if you're not educated, what are you thinking? Did he care about black people? You're actually asking those questions if you're coming from the black community and you're not reading all the time, you're not educating yourself because you're literally trying to survive. and. When that happens, ultimately, it becomes habit. Your mama voted Democrat, your dad voted Democrat, your big sister, big brother voted Democrat. How could you think about voting any other way? And all of a sudden, those habits kick in, and then you get older and older, and you start seeing how it profoundly affects your life as an individual, and you're like, wait a minute. Like, for example, for me, when we go back to 2016, 2020, um, yeah, Hillary was somebody that I would not have mind seeing in office. In 2020, I can tell you right now, I would have voted for I would have voted for Kasich in 26. I'm sorry. I would have voted for Kasich. I would have voted for Chris Christie. I would have voted um, definitely for those guys. And there's a plethora. I would have voted for Nikki Haley if Nikki Haley was running right now instead of Donald Trump. She would be getting my vote over the Democrats. I wouldn't hesitate. I wouldn't hesitate because no matter what you think about those folks, they show you they know how to be an adult in the room. That's a far cry from where I was 15, 20 years ago. It would have been Democrat all day, every day. I don't think like that now. I don't think like that now. And I don't, and, and honestly speaking, I don't think anybody should. I don't think it's right to have any party affiliation with today's politics because I don't think you can trust either side. I think you got to watch what they do, see what they do, and see what policies work best for you. And Mark Levin once said this to me, along with Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. He said, hey, man, most people vote their issues. They're not looking at you. You can bring up sure. immigration, the economy, all right. That. Whatever issue is most near and dear to them, y yeah. that's what they focus on. So you got a black community right now that'll look at Joe Biden. You know what? You know what? You know what they'll say right now? Well, you know, Barack Obama gave about three hundred and twenty-eight, three hundred and thirty million dollars to HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. Trump comes in there, he gives about 360 eight years later. Barack Obama did that in 2010. Trump did that in 2018, about 360 million. But now look what Biden and Biden administration has done. They've dedicated over seven billion. For some folks, that's enough. Not for me, not for others, but for some folks, that's enough. And it's about finding that one issue because why? How did they learn? Then this is why I can't I can fault the politicians just as much as I can fault the voter because folks got that way because the politicians got them that way. Because you go into their you go into their respective communities 
and you give that song and dance and that lip service about that one issue they cared most about. That's what you wanted. That's what you trained the voter to be like. And in most instances now, it's coming back to bite you. May I? Yes. I want I want to say because you said a lot, and I want to I want to write it down, and sure. I want to go through sure. each of these to the best of my ability. Sure. So. 1964, Rob, you pulled it up, and I'm glad you said it, because I, I went and I actually looked at Snopes. Go to Snopes, because I wanted to know, did he actually say that, right? Because this is what we found. I won't read it, but the audience can read it. Uh, uh, can you go a little lower where it shows the whole thing? Okay, I, I, we can just show that at the top, and then we'll read the whole thing. Okay, right here. You can do that right there. These, these boom, yep. that's right. They're getting pretty uppity these days, and that's a problem for us. They've got something now they've never had before. The political pull to back up their uppityness. Now we've got to do something about this, and we've got to give them a little something, just enough to quiet them down, not enough to make a difference. And then, boom, you know that line. You brought it up. I'll have him voting this way, for Democratic, next, for the next 200 years. Yes. You know what Snopes said? Snopes didn't say it's not right. Go a little yeah, bit more. It says checkers. unproven. And yeah. Snopes is... One that would typically be quick to say they never said this. Then CNBC writes an article, if you can pull this one up. Uh, CNBC writes an article saying Lyndon Johnson was a civil rights hero, but also a racist. And if you look at the stuff about him, how many times he dropped a, you know N-word and all this other stuff, this guy was not wanting to do what he did with civil rights. No. Credit goes to one man and the community that pushed it. There's a reason why we all have a poster or a painting of him in our offices and our walls. And he's admired by... Everybody. It doesn't people. matter. Left, right, center, white, yes. black, Asian, yes. Hispanic. Everybody loves and admires what yes. this man did. One of the greatest movements of all time. He accomplished it in a peaceful way, different than X. He was able to get it done, right? Okay. Um, at that time, you know, if, can you type in Civil Rights March? Just type in Civil Rights March, if you don't mind doing that. Just type in Civil Rights March and go to images, if you could do that. You know, when you type in civil rights, click on that first picture. What do you see a lot of? Look at the way they're dressed. Yeah. Just look at the way. Go to the bottom left picture, maybe. That's got more people in suits. Bottom left. Bottom left. Look at the ties. Look at the suits. Tuxedos. Look at the tuxedos. Look at the bow ties. Wow. Mm -hmm. Pure class on the way it's being dressed. So Lyndon Johnson wore on poverty, 1964. Do you know at the time, him... Uh, uh, can you look up when Planned Parenthood came out? Maybe you look and look. I don't know the exact year. When did Planned was, Parenthood come out? I think it was 71, 72. 70, uh, uh, what year is it? Go a little bit. Uh, uh, Singer, whatever her name is, where he st started the movement. Anyways, so you look at some of this data and you see that we went at the time when kids are being born. Yeah. Only 4% of kids in America, if you can pull up the stat, Rob, 4% of mm -hmm. kids in America were born, okay, yeah. in single family household. 96% right. mm -hmm. mom and dad. Yeah. Fast forward, we went from 40 to 4 percent to 41 percent. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's even higher for African Americans. Mm -hmm. This is America. This is not African Americans. Percentage of children born out of wedlock, but African American is to the roof. That wasn't the case. You guys were always united, conservative. It's a good community, respectful, mm -hmm. Bible Belt. Right. When I was in, in, in the Army and my friends in the Army, I was hanging out when I would go see their families. I was afraid of their mothers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Right. The, my, your mother would have talked to me like I'm her son. Right. And she would put me in my place. It was a different kind of a culture right. that was what I was accustomed to, mm -hmm. right? So to me, when they say systemic racism... Uh, if you want to give anybody credit, it's Lyndon Johnson, and he he succeeded in actually trying to create that kind of an environment. And the, and the reason why he, he was very creative on the way he did it is he blamed the other side for it and got them, the, the, the blacks, to mm. vote Democratic for God knows how many decades until now where things are slightly changing. And I'll wrap up the thoughts here, and I want to get your— uh, Can I respond to what course, you just said? Of course, yeah, absolutely. I think that— <clears throat> When you mention all of those things, first of all, you said nothing that I can dispute. Nothing. Because that's just factually correct, what you pointed out. And I think that the important thing to bring up when we bring that stuff up is that is exactly the reason why black folks in America have historically over the last 50 plus years had that divide with the Republican Party. Stay with me. What happened is, Patrick, you invite me onto this show and you talk to me. We're having this conversation. 
you show me facts. I leave this office. I give you no resistance. And then you turn on the TV and I'm like, Patrick Bet Davis full of it. <laughs> Look what he brought up. This is some racist BS, blah, 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 blah. You'd never want to talk to me again. It's disingenuous. It's not educated. It's not fair. One of the things that we have to pay attention to is that there is a Republican Party that can't disguise its resentment towards black America because of what you just pointed out. It's just that we're looking at it differently. As this black person, mm -hmm. when I got to know Republicans and I heard my parents speaking about conservatism and stuff like that, I remember asking my, my mother one day, I said, you know that fact. How would you feel if you know that you contributed to bringing civil rights legislation to the desk of the presidency to sign in the law. And that was ignored because the party that he represented, he made sure they got all the credit for what you played a role in bringing to the table that helped the African-American mm -hmm. community supposedly. Mm -hmm. And it was completely ignored. You'd lose our respect because you'd believe you're not educated enough. You're not, you're not doing, you're putting forth your due diligence to know it wasn't just him. It was us. And his intent wasn't honorable. Ours was. I think that you have a lot of Republicans who are knowledgeable about that history that you just pointed out mm -hmm. and the distaste that they have had for African-Americans for a period of time, at the very least, emanates from that, from folks not knowing what role they play. When I listen to a Sean Hannity or Mark Levin and Andrew Wilkow and others mm -hmm. talk about Black America's history mm -hmm. and racism. They never fail to point out the Democrats played a huge, huge role in this, y'all. And the black community lets them off the hook. They look at us. And there's a level of absolute frustration, palpable frustration that comes from that. I don't always agree with it, but I understand it which made it easy for me to communicate with members of the Republican Party when they come to me and they want to talk about different issues. Because I'm like, I want to learn more. I want to hear this because you're not going to come to me and engage in demonization talking about the other side, in this case, the right. You're not doing that. What are your policies? What are you bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me about them being racist because you know what else? You're asking me to assume you're not. How do I know you're not? I know there were KKK members that were in, in uh, members of the Democratic Party that were on Capitol Hill. Robert Byrd of West Virginia, to name one of them. I know that for a fact. And so why are we to assume that just because you're a Democrat, you're on our side? So I do get where you're coming from, and I understand. Yeah. So to me, that that part to me is, so you know, you, you check policies to see how it's benefited a community, and you say yes or no. Uh, you, you have no idea how much I, my favorite part of this podcast is when you said your mother, when she went on welfare, she was despised of it, and she couldn't wait to get off of it. Right. I can't tell you what that means to uh, uh, to me to salute and, and yeah. respect that. And then let's go to a couple other things you sure. said on who you would vote for and who you wouldn't vote for. You said John Kasich. He was he was a centrist. I think he was an independent. I don't yeah. think he was a Republican, but I think I like he was centrist. A, yeah, I think I like he was centrist. he was a nice guy. I think right. John Kasich was a nice guy. He was guy. a Republican governor. He was. Yeah, he was. Ohio. Yeah, yes. he was a nice guy. Uh, uh, I think uh, Christie. Yeah, he's a, a fighter. I actually enjoy listening to Christie. He's a friend, I think by he's the way. a little bit. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm aware. Yeah, and I was a little bit like you know. I think you know. I have some friends that were you know, part of Trump's camp, he fired him. And then there's a bitterness and, you know, that's between them. I, I just watch it and say, you're not going to win being a bitter candidate. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to, you're not going to win that way. And, you know, maybe that was it. It wasn't, it is what it is. Um, Nikki Haley. So, you know, for me, when I wasn't into politics mm -hmm. and I was purely business guy, right. like, I don't have time for this stuff, man. Right. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to go to business, make my money. My dad's going to retire 99 cents. That's a lot of people in this world. Yeah. I'm like, I point. have zero desire for politics, right? Yeah. And then the bigger I got, I'm like, oh, you kind of got to study a little bit of politics exactly. on what's going on, right? Because like, why? Why would I want to study politics? Uh, the taxes you pay is politics. Yes. Right? The policies in your community is politics. Homelessness is politics. Yes. The war that happened that wasn't safe is politics. All that stuff is, okay, I got to pay attention to it. So a, a Nikki Haley, 
very eloquent, incredible speaker, mm-hmm. tough, right. strong, good background, right. you know, all of that. So now we're dealing with left, right, and then you have uh, <laughs> the the anti-establishment, the anti-establishment and the establishment. Okay. The anti-establishment is not Republican. Like Kennedy's were anti-establishment. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Reagan was semi anti-establishment. Uh, uh, Trump definitely anti-establishment. Right? You can go, Lincoln was anti-establishment. Mm-hmm. These are anti-establishment guys. Mm-hmm. Establishment is the big families. You know, you see some of the guys that have been president multiple times. That's establishment. When when somebody's part of the establishment, they're part of the same party. Okay. It's no longer like a left or right. Nikki Haley to me is part of the establishment. She's an establishment right. She's going to do what the establishment right's going to do. And in many of the states, she got all the Democratic votes. They, they were willing to vote for her. But, you know, some of the big money guys that are in New York, establishment right. guys are willing to give, them the, give her right. the money. I can no to- longer remain in today's Democratic Party. Tulsi Gabbard says she is no longer a Democrat. A potential Tulsi Gabbard VP. Where we are being told that we just have to comply and go along with whatever they say. American people uh, are smarter than this. However, we must remain vigilant to recognize their propaganda for what it is, pure lie. Unfortunately, we live in a time where free speech is under attack. Whatever they say goes, and we we have to just follow. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, you owe them an apology. (laughs) Taking on Kamala Harris on a debate stage before, I would look forward to doing that again. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.